Now then, before I start, viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to At the Gates of Pop Culture with your host, Rare Eddie One, and welcome at whatever time of day you are listening to, or night, you know, whatever time of day, morning, evening, night, you are listening, watching, whatever time, I hope you're having a, a bloody awesome time, an absolute awesome awesome time i've got a few new buttons i'll probably be trying hopefully one of them i don't have to use because that's one where i will probably have failed um hopefully i don't use it um but me and my dyslexia and me reading off stuff it will come into uh, play uh probably within the first five minutes um let's let's have a game if i mess up in the first five gimmick uh, five gimmicks there we go take a shot if I mess up in the first five minutes of the reading sections, take a shot. Whatever. I can't really take a shot. I'm taking a beer. Uh, it's not even a beer. It's a, it's a juice, and I'm nearly out. So I may have to pause this to get another one. But anyway, as we are, we are here at the gates of pop culture. We just strolled down. We're having a little stroll to see if the gates of pop culture are finally open to us on the outside. Us who love pop culture. Us who love the films, games, comic books, books. Us that absolutely adore this stuff. And uh, wondering if, you know, because our money, we, we pay for this stuff as well. And wondering if we're able to get a glance in, maybe maybe to touch some of our favourite con uh, conspiracies, some of our favourite... Um, pop culture so we're, we're just having a stroll down uh memory lane as well because we'll think we'll remember some classic films you yeah, back to future oh how good was back to futures yeah you know, indiana indiana jones was one of the goats of all time um greatest of all time films you know the first three um and then you got my my ultimate favorite my my favorite it's when I, I say that it's so hard to actually choose um because you've got your lord of the rings you've got your godfathers you've got the back to the futures indiana jones but i quite possibly i've probably seen this film over a hundred times and po quite possibly even more than that um maybe even two three hundred times i've seen this film so many times and i love it and it stars probably one of the greatest action stars of our of 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 the era 80s 90s and 2000s and the one and only arnold absolute fantastic actor actor really action star anyway um but terminator 2 judgment day is gotta be up there and, and then i'll 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 think about some event. I'll say, well, Scarface is definitely up there. And then I'll think again, well, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is an epic, epic fantasy. Absolute epic. It's visually, it's stunning. Visually, it's stunning. And, you know, that was that came out in the 2000s. You know, uh, you know and it's just absolute stunning. And then it's sort of... <laughs> when the hobbit came out I, I wasn't quite keen on the hobbit it they, they were good but it it wasn't quite lord of the rings special i think they the if they cut it down to two films rather than three i think it would have been perfect it, but it just uh, there's just something about it um and rings of power come on now don't be silly but anyway I've, I've just arrived at the gates of pop culture. They are locked yet again. They, these people who generally call us out, these people that own this, these IPs, these um, comics, these movies, these these people who own our favorite franchises, generally call us out for gatekeeping, where they're the ones who actually gatekeep. They're the ones who actually keep people out. They're the ones who actually divide try and divide the fan base and in some in some ips it has divided the fan base but in some others it hasn't 
you 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 just look at uh, the fellowship. You you look of a lot of the rings, and when Rings of Power came out, they try their hardest to divide the fan base. You've got a little pocket of fan base that has divided and split off, but the majority of the fan base is together. And that's a beautiful thing. But anyway, as as I've just said that, have I I've just said that I am looking at some pristine the gates are pristine, but the outside of the gates. So I am looking into the garden, sorry. I I am looking into the garden as I speak, and I can see some pristine gates within the garden. Some pristine gates. Some there's some war damage, um, but I see a Peter Jackson out there and an Ian McKellen out there as well, um, and they keep on defending these gates um, from a barrage of Amazon, from the creators of Rings of Power, from um, that the the woman who's in charge at Amazon, Sulky or something like. Well, she's Sulky, all right, uh, Sulky. I, I probably butchered the name. I don't care to be honest with you. Um, they've yet again tried to take down these gates, but the likes of Ian McKellen and Peter Jack Jackson have defended with their life, their honour, and they have held their heads up again because the uh, Rings of Power team, the Amazon team, you know, they've all soaked off. It looks like they're on their phone. It looks like they're on Twitter and they're trying to me to someone yet again, yet again. And then, oh, oh, hello, what? Oh, I've just seen out the corner of my eye. Russell Dickhead Dave, I mean, Russell T. Davis has pushed over yet and yet again another disabled person and shouted in their face, tough, at the top of his lungs. And it looks like he's having a penis baby. It looks like he's having a penis baby. Oh my God, it's the 15th Doctor. How on earth did that happen? I, I know it's in, we're in the gates of pop culture and anything can happen, um, but I, that's, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, my days, he's just had a penis baby. And 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 all the, the leftoids and all the people with blue hair on Twitter are all gathering around and singing their praises. And so, yeah, they're screaming, they're, they're cheering on Russell Dickhead Davis, I mean, Russell T. Davis. Oh, oh my God, what, don't you dare do that, Spielberg. You take your finger away from old E.T.'s bottom. You absolutely, they're, they're going to try and finger him. They're trying to finger him. And he's saying, what, I can barely hear what Spielberg is saying to E.T. into the crowd around him. You will, what, I, I, it sounds like he's shouting, we will only do this in native E.T. language. <laughs> And if you can't understand it tough, you do better. He's saying that, you know, oh my God. He's, he's having flashbacks to West Side Story. What an absolute t t I nearly said it without pressing my sensor button. Um, YouTube likes to um, um, uh, don't like me swearing. Um, and I am seeing that in real time, which, you know, I'm trying to cut down and swearing. Because um, as I walk away from the gates of pop culture... <sighs> Heartbroken a little bit. We've seen some of our favourite characters in there get. I just, I'm pretty sure I've seen I've seen Indy getting fingered by Kathleen Kennedy at Spielberg, and I also seen Lucas George Lucas get fingered by Kathleen Ken Kennedy and Bob Iger. It's I'm just heartbroken. There's nothing we could do. We're trying our hardest to get in. One guy next to me tried climbing over the gate. And he was shot down, shot down by some bullets that were like rainbow colour bullets. And he was shot down, par, par. Unfortunately, he fell on the other side of the fence and they are uh, fingering his dead body um, and throwing like um, rainbow flags on him that look like they're from. Um, yeah, so <laughs> poor man. We can't even bury our, one of our soldiers. Um, we can't even bury their. We can't even rescue our dead soldiers. Um, so as I walk away from the gates of pop culture, I hope... Sorry, we have fun here. I try and have fun here. I hope you enjoy that little intro. If you are new here, that's what I like to do. I like to try and... F I, none of that's written down. It's pure from memory, pure... 
I do have a little re rehearsal before I start this, but it's pure from memory. Um, so if you're interested in writing me an intro of that sort from the outside of a pop culture gate, if you want to write me an intro, you know, um, about some of our favourite um, characters, games, TV shows, comic books, getting fingered by the people that own them, let me know, send them my way. Uh, all all the my contact details will be in the show notes and the description of the video. So please get in contact with me. If you think that you want to add something to the intro, please do. But like I was saying, if you are new here, this we talk about, I talk about pop culture here, I do. I talk about pop culture, everything pop culture, games, TV shows, films, yeah, all, all that, everything pop culture, you know, comic books, your know, books, and, you know, all this sort of thing. I do suffer heavily from dyslexia, so there will be some absolute monumental f***s. Um, but, you know, I, I this was purely, I, I don't really want to do much editing to this. The littlest possible, um, the littlest editing possible and um, who knows this may be turn it who knows where this channel goes this may turn it into a, a live stream that would be absolutely awesome um i have no idea how to do that sort of stuff um so if you know let me know um but we have a fun show tonight episode five um if you are watching these on YouTube or Rumble, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. That would be awesome. That would be fantastic. We will fight. We will fight at the gates of pop culture for our beloved IPs and culture and franchise. We will fight together in this war of pop culture. <laughs> I, I talk, totally fucked that up. I've gone past the point where I, swear, I will swear now, even though I do have a curse button i will fucking swear um because this is mainly a, po a podcast as well so hit that follow button if for whatever podcast provider you are listening to hit that follow button please and le if you want leave me a review that would be absolute awesome i do have a beer here as well so cheers to you guys if you are working hard away or you know you're driving um i hope you are having a responsible drink um, but for you that aren't and are just sat sat around, join me with a drink. Cheers. I probably won't drink that much of that because it's not it's not it's like that. I like Amstel. It's very dodgy. It's from a dodgy batch. I might have to send it back. It, <laughs> and all you that don't like me, you be like, ah, yeah. Oh, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to put myself in a little corner because we've got some news to get into today. We have some news to get into today with our favourite pop culture. Um, so again, I'm Rarity One. Please, whatever, wherever you can follow me, follow me. Pretty much that name, Rare Eddie One. Uh, the letter, uh, the letter, the number one, um, not the, the word one. So go follow me. YouTube, Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, um, uh, OnlyFans, um, where I where I play naked chess with some some blow up um, action figures. Um, <laughs> only joking. What? Yeah, only joking. I'll, although I did see someone who I knew, who who I know, sorry, who's contemplating doing a OnlyFans. And she, I, I, they probably don't listen to this, um, but if you do, I'm sorry, I'm not calling you out or out. But they're thinking, they're contemplating of doing an OnlyFans, but tastefully, so maybe showing their feet or underwear sort of pictures. Girl, just get your... F oh, I went there straight away, did I? Just get your tats out, just get... Get get your tets out and get your get your lettuce out. <laughs> get your lettuce out and you know people do like licking lettuce. I I'm I definitely like licking a bit of lettuce. Uh, but we're gonna, I'm going to start off a little different. If here's my uh, Twitter, um, I I want to click on it. Just, but I hope I can go back. Here's my Twitter. 
go follow me there. I do two types of content, conspiracy and pop culture, mainly pop culture on YouTube and Rumble. But I do do some conspiracy if you are interested. All my links are in there somewhere. Well, no, they're not actually. I don't really know how to do that either. But if you scroll down, you can see some of my videos, some of my, my other podcasts there. Hey, hi everybody, Dr. Nick, because it's no, no longer Dr. Who. But anyway, so something absolute massive happened. Something massive happened with pop culture. Um, the left have been doing this for a long time now. They've been going on Twitch. They've been going on YouTube. They've been getting involved with the uh, you know, with the younger crowd. But finally, finally, the right is starting to listen, and they realise yes, to maybe win. The, I'm I'm not American, so I don't have a dog in this fight. Um, and I'm generally not for one side or other. Um, tend to lean one side if I do but you know the far left are absolutely lunatics um, but you can't lie they have been dominating the pop, pop culture um, with the likes of AOC going on Twitch streams and going on big Twitch streamers you know and finally we've got the Vec on Friday Night Tights the Vec on Friday Night Tights that was massive Benny Johnson was there, who is a hell of a follow. But the Vec on Friday Night Tights, are you absolute kidding me? The Vec, I've, again, I'm not American, but I've been following this guy for not, not for a long time, ever since maybe, you know, a couple months, four months ago. I've been, I started to take an interest in this guy, and I should have said this then. I could see this guy being, um, Donald Trump's vice president. Now, I know Trump, for you um, people with TDS out there, um, Trump, he's not picked his vice president yet, and and I know he's got his vice president in mind, but if this, I, I really hope this is the guy. Tucker Carlson would be a good shout, shout as well, um, but this was absolute massive, seeing Devec on FNT, I love the guys at FMT. You know, Nerdrotic, fantastic follow. Geeks and Gamers, you, see, you got your um, d Dead Cobra and Ryan Kennel. Fantastic people. Um, Shad, I've, I've met I've met Nerdrotic, I've met Shad, um, I've met X-Ray Girl and Quarterback and Critical Drinker. And it's about time. These guys could have shut, you know, I said, no, go, you know, go fuck yourself, Devec. No, we didn't. They opened it up, and it's about time we've we've seen this. And I I know I'm not a I, I, to be honest. I don't care how many people. I, if if one person listens, if no person listens, I don't care. I'm still going to say it. But I encourage the vec. I encourage most people. You know, especially you know under if I would encourage Trump to go on shows like this. These are your real voters. These are your real voters. These people here. <laughs> and I, I saw this before, because I only really wanted to touch on this, because the guys at FNT are doing a fantastic job. At Nerd Rock and Geeks and Gamers are doing a fantastic job. As is hilarious, as always. He dropped out, because again, he's like me, he's a Brit. Although, that's rumour, I think he is um, New Zealand, I think he's a New Leesan, New, New Leesander, um, I think he's from New, New Zealand, um, he dropped out so Vec could join, um, fantastic, that's it, but this is, I just wanted to uh, just have a quick look at this meme, um, Peter Parker is Spider-Man, Miles Morales is Miles Morales, I can't say that word, but you get the mean. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Absolute awesome. So I'm going to shut that. Well, I, I might leave that down. I might leave that there. Because that's absolutely huge. Huge and well done to the guys over at FNT. Well done to you guys. So we are starting off at Screen Rant. 
of all the places screen right rant reaches season two streaming ratings best old Defe uh, december new releases i've finished reacher fantastic absolute fantastic not quite as good as season one but it was still up there it's still up there um i'm trying so popular shows like this stranger things season one amazing season two took a hell of a dive now comparing this you know these first two seasons together so stranger things on one end and and um reach on other and two different uh, two types of content i know um but stranger things drop off um from season one to season two was vastly was huge um it had some iconic iconic characters in it but it was huge um it wasn't i enjoyed it but again i i know it wasn't well rece received um but this one seems to be up there um it's only that's it's like it had a little little dip just a tiny dip um but let me know your thoughts have you watched um um reach it i will be doing a season one and two review together that might be a bit of a task um it may be two parts i may do season one and then do a season two but i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed um reacher it's 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 good to getting back to masculine uh masculine characters um not every not every other character is a girl boss who knows how to do everything but better than a man <sighs> looking at you star wars um oh, it, it marvel in particular disney i'll just say fucking disney um and it was just it was a triumph absolute triumph um reach a season two streaming ratings best all of december's new releases on other platforms showcasing just how popular the action series is now i think it says it here reach a season two uh, topped december 18th to 24th so the um the week before the christmas day itself uh, in 23 streaming releases uh, with 1.18 billion minutes of watch time being other popular shows um, with new releases like the crown and percy jackson the action series has become prime videos most popular release um gaining more viewers each season and already getting renewed for season three now they re they already renewed for season three way before season two dropped which i was sort of annoyed with because you'd never know how the, the season's gonna be received um luckily it was fantastic i say luckily it was it was just fantastic and I'm so glad they're getting season three. Uh, hopefully they're up and filming. Um, but um, Reacher season two has bested all of the December 23 streaming releases, boasting ratings that reflect the action series popularity. The Prime video, originally based on Child, uh, Lee Child's book. Um, they, so I, I think this is it. The show garnered a 1.18 billion minutes of watch time, beating new releases that month, like The Crown and and uh, My Life with the the Walter uh, Walter Boys. Sorry, this. So I don't think it's in in this actual article. Um, is it in this article? Now, basically, it was 
Amazon fucked up when this week, um, I think it was episode six in this week, um, it didn't have, uh, maybe, I, I, I think it was six, correct me if I'm wrong, um, dropped, and that, that watch minutes are included in this 1.18. So who knows? The watch minutes could be nearly 2 billion. 1.8, 1 1.9, 2 billion. I, I, I think it would probably in the 2 billions. Um, but Amazon had fucked up themselves. Um, they do acknowledge it. Um, I was trying to look for the article um, that I saw and I can't quite remember i should have bookmarked it i normally do um but i've looked through everything and it hasn't um it's not there i can't find it it's so annoying but this show was fantastic absolute fantastic <coughs> <coughs> fantastic it's, it's just fantastic i love season one season two Again, it's not quite as good. Um, there's a bit in it where I was... Some guy from Forbes didn't like how um, it it went. He says this show had gone downhill. I disagreed with him. It, you know, not like he would um, he'd know who I am, but I disagreed with him, um, and I did do a video. Um, I So I may link that in the description. Um, but yeah, I will do a review on Rick, Witcher, uh, Witcher, Reacher season two and one. So stay tuned. I will be doing a review. Um, but I just wanted to touch on that. I just wanted to touch on something good. We finally, finally, there's something good for us, you know, people, us nerds, us geeks, us um, who love this sort of who love this stuff and uh, who've been shat on time after time after time by Amazon, by Disney, by Marvel, yeah, you know, by the BBC. We've been shat on so many times and it's just good. It's just good to get something, something good. Yeah, you know, something that we can actually all come together and love because in... In general, everyone seems to be liking this. Critics and audience alike like uh, liking this um, show. It's a beautiful thing. So I'm going to shut that off. Let me know if you have seen it. Let me know if you're interested in it. Let me know if you're interested in my review. Um, and uh, Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Even if you just want me to tell, tell me to fuck off, then that, you know, that's your... That's your um, that's your um that's your right um yeah, i may be sarcastic in return but you know um i saw this early today when i was watching the real bbc uh, and i thought i'm i'm gonna have to put i'm gonna have to put this in because this is absolute fucking and it's behind a paywall it's behind a fucking paywall you absolute scumbags absolute i bet you like i bet this guy likes fingering um, um different characters um, what an actual, f what an absolute pleb. I bet he fucking drinks so much soy, infused tea and soy this and soy that. What an absolute fucking loser. Um, anyway, The Independent. This title will say it all. Does Oppenheim, so this is actually from the 9th of January. And, I'm, and I'd maybe not have come across it if I weren't watching the real BBC. Um, earlier um, but this says it all does Oppenheimer's Golden Globes win herald a troubling return to Hollywood's macho daddy movie days <sighs> I bet he had high heels on when he wrote this I bet you had high heels on when you wrote this you absolute fucking cook uh, christopher nolan's nuclear biopic donny mate uh, donny mate i'm uh, fucking up take that shot now you... 
Uh, it dom- dominated the 2024 Golden Glows, emerging as the definitive uh, for... Oh. Uh, I, for, uh, brain fat there. Uh, front runner of this year's award season. The three-hour biopic is... Uh, oh, fucking you and your big words, you fucking prick. Quintessentially quintessentially one of the guys with i'm not even gonna say your name um and represents everything the oscars have been trying for years to move away yeah they yeah they have been trying to move away from good films they've been trying to yeah um been going towards films what jeffrey epstein likes um or did like um if you believe the if you believe the narrative behind it he could still be alive for some you know he could still be alive um but yeah the oscars are trying to go um to cater to films what uh, jeffrey epstein liked and giselle maxwell or Giselaine maxwell however you fucking pronounce it um so yeah yeah they are uh, moving away from good films uh well-written stories and catered for you know identity 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 politics i fuck that word up all the time so i try not to use it because i fuck it up all the time <laughs> and wokeness and agenda driven politic politicy films yeah and that's where they've been going i think ricky gervais said it the best um and you guys Hollywood really does need to go. There's only a couple of people in Hollywood that I would maybe risk to save. Maybe. Nolan's probably up there. I don't think he lives in Hollywood. Um, but yeah. You guys, you who know who know how right people... It's so funny that people on the left... People on the left... It, I, I bet you this guy is probably from the UK. Um, but I bet you this guy votes for whatever. Um, so I'm fucking brain fighting all over. This guy votes for whatever his NPC download he got that morning and he'll probably go vote for him in his high heels, in his lipstick, just getting ready to be sp- Banked by Daddy Disney. Um, what a fucking shill. Talking about the Oscars, here we go. Oscar nominations 2024, the full list of nominated movies, actors, and directors. Oh, how diverse will this be? Uh, very is the is the word I'm looking for. Very, very diverse. Uh, do I have a button? <laughs> anyway best leading actress um best actress in a leading role yeah so i think the woman from killers of a flower moon will win um which actually pissed off a lot of fans because margot robbie um where is she best, best actor in a leading role uh i think I think Paul Giamatti might win that in the holdovers because it's a bit of a weirdish film. I would love myself, I would love to see Killian Murphy uh, win it for Oppenheimer, but I've got a feeling the holdovers will take that that round. Paul Giamatti. Um, best actors in a supporting role. Uh, oh, yeah, actor. So... So you start off by actress in a leading role, and then you got to actor in the role, leading role. Now you go actor in a. And it's, am I? I I might be missing something here, but best actor in a supporting role. Um, Sterling K. Brown. I've no idea who you are. Sorry, mate. De Niro. Um, killer. De Niro has gone. Uh, down a shitter for me, De Niro. Um, used to love him, but he's such a cook. 
And why is my TV turned on in the background? That's weird. Um, I would love to see um, Downey Jr. RDJ win it uh, for Oppenheimer, but I could see Ryan Gosling win it, I, even though I've not seen Barbie, but I could see that happening. I could see him uh, winning that as well. Um, Mark Ruffalo is another actor who I cannot stand. Best actress in a supporting role, Emily Blunt. I I liked her uh, performance in it. It, yeah, you know, I think she performed it quite well actually. Um, um, which just shows how good of an actress she is. Um, Danielle Brooks, that will that will win it. That will win it. Um, Daniela Brooks um, from The Colour Purple, that will win it. Best director. Ooh. Martin Scorsese, he's gone downhill as well. Um, if Nolan doesn't win this, Nolan doesn't win this, then the Oscars are, we've lost, the Oscars have lost. Um, and I'm not saying that because he's white, or oh, we, we, he's going to win because he's white. No, it's a fucking fantastic film. Um, yeah. Um, best writing. Uh, I don't know, actually, that one. Maybe, uh, maybe the, hmm, maybe the holdovers again might take that one because it's a weirdish film. Yeah, you know, Hollywood likes their weirdness. That's why they like Jeffrey Epstein. Um, best writing. Ooh, probably poor things will probably take that one. Because again, they like him. Well, maybe Barbie might take that one. Maybe. Um, best international um, feature film. <laughs> the, oh, this is where I have no idea. I have fucking no idea. Um, animated feature, um, feature film. The Boy and the Heron. I like Studio Ghibli. I love Studio Ghibli, Ghibli films. I've yet to see this one, but in all honesty, I could see, I would probably think Spider-Man will win that um, across the Spider-Verse. The one I am I am looking forward to, I'm fucking just going to scan across a load of bleh, bleh, um, look at these horrible fucking sons of bitches. Um, do I have a, well done you lot. <laughs> Um, where did I see it? No, where's it gone? Where did I see it? I might not be in on this one. Oh, best visual effects Godzilla minus one. If that doesn't win it again, if that doesn't win it, and Nolan doesn't win in the same night, Hollywood is lost. Well, Hollywood is lost. Um, it's a long way from where it was. A hell of a long way from where it was. I'm shutting all these down. I don't, I forgot that I, I may actually need these up when I write my little, uh, <laughs> when I like my little blurb for them all. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> oh, what an absolute fucking tool. Absolute tool I am. I get another one. You fucking tool. I don't get that. I'm not, I don't deserve that one. Because um, I'm an absolute fucking tool. Um, but let's uh, another fucking independent, another independent. Take that for what you, it, it is. Um, I'm not taking the piss out of people. Uh, I'm taking the piss out of Hollywood and the independent, in, independent. Um, I work for the independent. Oh, well done, me. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Uh, Doctor Who star Billy Gibson to be replaced as Doctor's companion just after one season. Just after one season. Why are they replacing her? I did a video in the week. They are replacing her because she is white. That's the only thing. The only thing they are, um, they are replacing her is because she is white. 
Russell Dicker Davis, I mean, sorry, I mean Russell T. Davis has done everything in his power to shit out a new Doctor Who. He's done everything he's in his power to just shit on Doctor Who fans uh, to destroy this once great um, um, piece of it, piece of art. It was once great. This franchise has just gone to shit. Now they've got Disney's fingers in the pie, and they'll and they will RTD and the the BBC, the BBC will do anything. They'll lick, lick anything off of Disney's boots. And for all you guys that are saying out there, well, Disney ain't got any sort of creative control. Go fuck yourselves. Wake up, you stupid sons of bitches. Uh, wake up. They've got so much. They they will have a lot of control. They will have control, and there's nothing you can do about it. And people are saying, well, Doctor Who's always been woke. Yes, but it's always had a good fucking story. You can't say that now, can you? You can't say that now. <laughs> you fucking nubheads. Um, Doctor Who star Millie Gibson is being replaced because she's white just after one season, playing the Doctor's companion. Um, Gibson 19 debuted her role in the BBC's long-running sci-fi. It's no longer sci-fi as well, so stop calling it sci-fi. This is fiction. This is... Was it fiction? Uh, <laughs> I fucked up. I know I, I fucking absolute fucking knobhead. Fantasy, not fiction. I, I just said fiction because I'm seeing sci-fi. Um, but fantasy it is no longer a sci-fi show. It is a fantasy show. Um... So take out sci-fi now and just put fantasy because they don't care about the the law. They don't care about, you know, the, we know they don't care about the law um, with the timeless children. Um, we don't, we know they don't care about this, um, the, this shit anymore. So, and, and another reason, yeah, you know, the only reason that um, Gibson, the only reason that shoot Gatwick is in this is, Basically, RTD doesn't care about black people. If he cared about black people, why didn't he create something new? This is basically a hand-me-down. He's giving a hand-me-down to to the poor black man. Um, it's again, I I went over that in my video, so I will try and link it in in this um, in this. Um, but I just really wanted to touch on that because. The only reason they are getting, they are replacing, not with another white actress, they are replacing her with an actress of colour. Well done, you fucking filthy <laughs> bastards. Well done, you guys. Well done. Um, Because she's white. That's the only reason they are getting rid of the companion, uh, Gibson. Um, They are only getting rid of of her because she is white but when this show f is failing they we will see the return of david tennant so he, he will rescue um the show by they'll they'll try and rescue the show um but we all know what they'll do they'll have him in and they'll they'll talk down to him yet again uh, that's something a male presenting doctor wouldn't understand yeah Oh, how the fucking lying goes. I can't quite remember now. Uh, I've slept and I've had arguments here, there and everywhere. Um, so, yeah, I just really wanted to touch on that one. Um, quickly touch on that one because I know this show is going to be... I, I don't want this show to be too long. Um, but it, I know it's going to be fucking long. Um, but I hope you guys are enjoying enjoying it with me. I hope you guys are enjoying Um do you reckon I should put start putting a beer break in or a tea break or a coffee break in these shows? Um, but I'm just... Because I'm nearly at the end of my drink. Nearly at the end of it. Um, I'm going to try and ration it. Because that's what us Brits are good at. Rationing. Maybe not the gay ones. Um, oh, did I say that? Oh, dear. Oh, dear me. Anyway... <laughs> 
We've got some more good news. More good news. Marvel's Ironheart Disney Plus series has officially concluded filming. When did this start filming? In 2020? Is this when it started filming? In 2020, Marvel Studios um, fit, um, president Kevin Feige announced that Riri Williams, a.k.a. Ironheart, <laughs> would spring to life from comic pages to her own original series starring Dominique uh, Fawn. Sorry if I uh, butchered your name. Um, this isn't your fault. You know, this is purely Marvel, Disney, Kevin Feige, who are continuing to go ahead with their MCU, even though numbers aren't lying, and the MCU is failing. It's failing. Numbers do not lie. Let's reject all that shit. Numbers do not lie, and everything they've put out, everything the MCU has put out, especially when they um, overload it with, you know, with identity politics and diversity in in diversity and inclusion sounds like a pop band um when they focus on this numbers just go down because it's you know instead of focusing f um firmly on that focus on the story and and if a black actor happens to be in it, a black actor happens to be in it if a white actor happens to be in it, a white one. If an Asian, if a woman, you know, just concentrate on the story. There's thousands of women um, comic book heroes. Hundreds, hundreds. And, I, I, you know, hundreds and thousands of comic book, um, female comic book um, characters you could go from. But yet you keep coming up with the worst ones. Captain Marvel. Although, even that flopped and flopped out. I don't even think it got 100. Um, in in its domestic run, off the top of my head, I can't think. I don't even think it hit 200 worldwide. 200 million worldwide. It's fucking lost a shit ton of money. Um, but anyway, um, Ironheart will be part of phase five. Five, four, have the phase five and four. <sighs> Just maybe, I, I don't think there's maybe much help for Disney. Maybe if they, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what they could do to pull around the MCU. I don't know what they could do. Um, the idea what I always get from a uh, nerd rotic is maybe they should just cancel everything and just put it in, put it under lock and key for ten years. Let everyone forget about all the shit you you put out and just remember the good stuff. You got twenty odd movie, uh, great movies you can you know keep releasing every now and again. Um, but but you, people are just. Continue gonna people will just remember Ant Man Quantumania, Doctor Strange's mum, um, the, the Marvels or Space Marvels, um, homage to Space Balls. Um, they'll just remember that and the horrible seri series Echo, which was. I wish I was blind which I have a high possibility, you know, I could actually go blind. <laughs> um, I wish I was deaf, maybe. It was just bad. Just bad. It was bad. You Kingpin. I don't want to watch anything King with Kingpin in now. I really don't. It's like, let's compare it to Game of Thrones season eight and in the Kingpin. So Game of Thrones and Kingpin. Kingpin from your know, Netflix Marvel shows 
and Game of Thrones um, seasons one to I would I generally like six, so I go one to six. And then you got seven and eight. I know people, I know people online, offline, and in real that will not touch anything Game of Thrones now. I've told these people, uh, my friends and people online that I'm friendly with, I've told these people House of Dragon is awesome, absolute awesome. They will not even touch House of Dragon. They will not touch House of Dragon because they they know how badly 7 and 8 went. They feel like they were just shat on, shat on. Now, Kingpin in the uh, Netflix Marvel, he was very much there. Kingpin now, I don't want to, if I see anything with him in it, I won't watch it because he is fucking a cook. A cook. Um, but Dominique Fawn teases Iron Hearts. Let's get ready and strap in. Unlike the horrible joke um, um, the Marvel said to a... Every, oh, every time I, I think of, of these people and this shit, they're coming across more like Jeffrey Epstein than Jeffrey Epstein did. Um, when you had Valkyrie saying that horrible strap-on joke to an... I know in real life she's, um, she's of age, but in the show she's 16. They're filthy actors. Um, no actors, sorry. Filthy, filthy, horrible people, these people are. Horrible people. Um, but she's looking forward to it. Which the thing has concluded. concluded. Yeah, okay. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, I can say strap in, get ready. It will be a ride, much like they all are. It isn't I wouldn't say that, love. I wouldn't say that. Not now, and they used to be. They used to be a hell of a, you know, a hell of a time, but not anymore. Um, so I think this this show has had so much problematic behind it. It's 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 gone through some. I did a video on this. I can't quite remember. Um, it's gone through a lot, and they're finally finally um, getting ready to release. If it was in 2020, if it started in 2020, it's been, it's 24 now. And, you know, I think this has been ready for some time. So that shows you how confident Marvel are in this show. <laughs> oh my God. Fucking, oh my God. Oh. It just shows you how confident they are within this show. But anyway, so let me uh, continue. Um, Iron Heart will be part of Phase 5. While details about the series it are still pretty scarce, uh, Riri Williams' comic history will provide its uh, foundations. We finally met Riri Iron Heart Williams. Oh, fucking these articles do my head in. In Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Uh, in appearance um, that set the stage for uh, diving into her story. Although it's been a while since we last heard an update about the show, star Dominique Fawn has revealed that Ayn has happily concluded. Happily, I'd take happily out. Um, Filming, she notes, filming has concluded. Indeed, I mean, I can say, strap in, get ready, it will be a ride. <laughs> a ride to the toilets, more like, yes. Uh, much likely, all are, it's, much like they are, fucking, I, I fucked it up. Uh, where's the, my special one? Oh, here it is. Many, many, many hours later. <laughs> um, much like they all are it is an epic journey <laughs> an epic journey to the toilet and one that I'm very excited to share I'm happy for you I really am happy for her I I think she's been let down by the studios and the writing um, but 
Uh, did anyone see the absolute fucking horrible? I did watch Wakanda, uh, Wakanda forever. Um, but the the suit looked incredibly stupid. Stupid. Um, Einhardt's plot. Ah, dad, I don't even care about it, to be honest with you. Uh, if you care about it, I'm sorry, because I'm, I'm not going to go over it for you. Um, I'm sorry to disappoint. Many, many, many. Um, um, the reason why I created this show is to have fun, talk about some films and TVs, to shit on some films and TVs, because they've been shit on on us, so why can't we shit on them? Um, a lot of it, a lot of the topics I cover, I, I will try and... Um, one of my aims is for this year is to do a little bit better um, of getting into the topic of itself at getting getting into the topic um, and not just dip a toe. Um, but this show will it'll be an over it'll be over hour. This show um, I did have another topic I really wanted to dip a toe in, and uh, yeah. That's Ironheart, people. Are you excited for ha Ironheart? This show has been... Um, I think they started it in 2020. I think it finished filming in 21. They had to go back again. They had to go back yet again. And it's finally finished in 24. We may see it next year. We may see it next year. We may, it's a possibility we may see it this year. I doubt it, I think next year. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on Ironheart. Were you, were you excited when Ironheart was introduced in the um, Wakanda Forever? Oh, we oh, not another one. A fucking suit looked absolutely fucking stupid. Ooh, it looked stupid. I was going to search for uh, the designs, but it, That'll be a little bit effort effort on my uh, part. Um, fucking, it looks stupid. I wonder if I can go back and do it that way. Let's, let's do it on the screen. Look how bad that looks. Look how bad that looks. What on earth inspired him to do this? So maybe something from the 80s, maybe. <sighs> What on earth? And she's supposed to be Tony. I don't know the character fully, but is she supposed to be? Uh, I'm Tony Stark's um, predecessor. Tony, not predecessor. Um, Padawan. She's supposed to be his Padawan. Let me know. I'd probably fuck that up as well. Um, let me know. Let me go back um, to that article because I may need it. <laughs> oh, gone past it. I may need that article. Let me know which she Iron Man's Padawan. <sighs> but anyway, is Power World heading um, for a lawsuit? Nintendo. Fearing Nintendo takedown, Power World modding community bans links to Pokemon mod so that lawyers don't nuke all of us. So, this, I've not played it. I'm a PS5 guy. Yes, I've got a PC, but I don't really play it. I don't really, the only thing I use this PC for is editing, searching, and filming. <laughs> I don't use it for anything, um, really. Um, it's because I bollocks. Um, but it looks like a fun game. It looks like a fun. It looks. It does look like Pokemon with guns. Um, I'm yet to play it, but I. We all know Nintendo are fucking. You shit out a fucking Nintendo song in one of your videos, or. Yeah, you know, they will hit you hard. 
Det var helt rart. Um, <laughs> they will take down anyone and everything if they're thinking that um, if they're thinking that you're using their, any of their IP, which I love Nintendo for it, but at the same time, I, I think it does harm him at the same time. But again, Nintendo is has been a constant. Nintendo has been a constant for many years, and it will and it will stay a constant for many years to come. They they had a little blip, little blip, um, the Wii U, little blip. Um, but yeah, Nintendo will stay that constant. It it will stay that. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it will stay that that thing you look up to and you think I I want to aspire to be that. It will stay that sort of. Um, it will stay like that. Um, people will aspire to be the next Nintendo. People purely go to Nintendo because Nintendo don't fuck with woke shit or they don't fuck with if they won't let you mess around with anything of their they won't let you mess around with Mario you know Super Mario Bros or Smash Bros they, they won't let you mess with any of their shit and you know I love them for that but talking of games I I, that was really dipping a toe. That really was dipping a toe. I don't know too much power. I've, I've not played it. I've watched it. It looks fun. Um, but on PC, and you'll there's a modding link, and you can mod everything to be like Pokemon, and that's when Nintendo will come in and nuke this place. Nuke it. Unfortunately, so... I could understand why Power World is um, banning its um, Pokemon links. I, I understand that, 100% understand that. Um, but this Power World might actually make Pokemon better. Um, I'm talking of games. I don't often come here, the sun, <laughs> it's a fucking horrible newspaper. It used to be good when you had your page free, and I'd don't even think a page free, free is a thing anymore. Um, let me know in the chat. Is page free? Obviously, the the page free number is a thing. Yeah, but is page free a thing anymore? You, if you don't know what it means, I'm, I feel sorry for you. I really do. Page free is that still a thing? Um, but here I am. I'm at the sun. Who knows if they have a Patreon or not? I don't know. Uh, some big tatties. Um But anyway, game on. The 10 rarest and most valuable uh, valuable video games. I don't know why that sounded weird in my head. Um, it sounded very weird in my head. I've got this button as well. I've not used it yet. Certified Badass. Sorry if I, I may have used it, I don't know. Um, but anyway, well done, the sun. You get one of them. Um, so, I've not even finished the title, and I already fucked it up. Um, most valuable video games worth up to 1.6 million. Do you have one of these? So, it's got yada, yada, yada. So, if you are... If you're having a clear out in the... So, let me do this a little bit of justice. So, if you're having a clear out or, or spy a game in your local charity shop, you could be in the money. I'm pretty sure... Oh, here we go. Is it? Yeah. It's worth having a dig out in your attic as old video games from your childhood could be worth more than a few quid. Let us have a look at some of these games. Fucking hell. So, so if you're having a clear out or spy a game in your local charity shop, you could be the money. Whilst 
Consoles are desirable in their own right, the real value is often in the games, according to the experts. I don't know if I believe that, you know, um, especially coming from the sun. Tim Weeks <laughs> is um, Tim Weighted Weeks, or Tim is Weeks, his name is an auctioneer and toy specialist at Wessex Auction Rooms and is an expert in all things valuable. He told the son, as an auctioneer of many different toys and collectibles, we have seen an increasingly strong focus on retro video games market. These childhood video games consoles and their associated games are provided more and more popular as the prices achieve um, as the prices is that really what achieve achieved continue to increase it can be tricky to know what's valuable and what's not anything if you got a master system game sorry i don't know if it's called something different in the states if you got the mega drive or the genesis um, if you got um, a NES, Super Nintendo game, if it's in the box, if the box looks okay, no scratching, no nothing, does it have the um, the manual inside? Is the cartridge looking looking good? No damage to the cartridge? Just keep hold of it. Just keep hold of it. Who knows? You could have yourself a... Like we're going to see here. Um, it can be tricky. Yeah, I read that bit. I read that bit. Well, video games. Tim says the auction house often receives inquiries from members, from member of the public. From Who wrote this article? Received inquiries from member of the public. Keen to know their game could bag them some cash. My advice is always the same. Don't dispose of them. Get them in auction. You may be in for a pleasant surprise. Don't, if you've got Grand Theft Auto 5, don't take that to an auction house. If you're happy to go it alone, a huge number of retro games are also sold on eBay too. Tim explained, whilst the record-breaking video games that make news are often mint, and sealed examples, yours don't have to be. Yeah, if it's mint and sealed, you you, you could be sitting on an absolute gold mine. Um, and if it's from Nintendo or Sega and maybe Sony, well, actually, I was in I was in the, my local town. I was in town earlier, and I spotted a PS One Silent Hill game. 152 quid. I had that game. I had that game. And that's what CEX is selling it for. So maybe 100. Um, they will all have their value even without the boxes in many cases, according to experts. All right. So let's get to the meat and potatoes of this article. Super Mario Bros. 80, 1985 um, is 1. 1.6 million. But just giving it, oh, it's got 11 pictures. Does it show you any of the other pictures? No. Shows you other pictures. Um, at the top of the list is the original Super Mario Bros. released back in 1985. Um... And first hit in the UK in 87. Holy shit, 87. It was uh, the successor to 83 arcade game Mario Bros. Ah. And the first game in the Super Mario series. Uh, back in 2021, one lucky gamer managed to bag a whopping $2 million, one point, ah, $2 million, 1.6 million pounds in real money. Um, for a retro edition of the game. 
It broke records for the most expensive video games sale ever. Bloody hell. The game had been unopened since its original purchase and was made for Nintendo's first ever console. Holy moly. Number two, Super Mario 64. 1.29 million. Holy, holy, holy shit balls. Um, closely following Super Mario Bros. is the platform game from the same series, Super Mario 64. It was released in 96. Holy shit, 96. Well, 97 in the UK. And it was first in the series to feature 3D gameplay. A... 1996 edition of uh, this particular game sold for a whopping um, uh, 1.29 million. Um, the sale set records at the time before being beaten by the Super Mario Bros. Number three, Legend of Zelda, 1987. 725, um, 725,000. Oh, no. So, yeah, Zelda was sold. Yeah, I never, I've not played, I've never played a Legend of Zelda game. I hear they are good. I've never, ever played. Um, the game was released in 1987. Was it, was it released in the UK at the same year? It's, I guess so. And it sold for... It sold for a whopping seven hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds. Another copy of the same game was sold for seven hundred and twelve thousand. Um, at the time, this was the biggest sale of a video game before Super Mario sixty-four. <laughs> Fuck it out! Oh dear, this one breaks my heart. I had this game. I played the hell out of this game. Love this game, Sonic the Hedgehog, 1991. £350,000. Oh, fucking hell. Sonic the Hedgehog is, is a recognisable cartoon character for generations of people. But before the little blue guy had a movie franchise and action figures, this series started out with a video game. I only know him from the video game. Launched in 91 for Sega, the game quickly become one of the best-selling video games of all time. Selling a huge two, uh, 200, selling a huge 24 million copies, according to... Why does my TV keep fucking turning it on? i am not even got... I've turned the motion thing off. Unless I've got... Um, maybe my weight word is fuck off. Um... According to uh, Tim, if you have one of these wedged in a box in the loft, you could be in for a huge 350,000 uh, 350, pound payout. Mike Tyson's Punch Out 87. Ah, I fucking love that game. And that was sold for 260. Number six is interesting, Resident Evil, PS1, 1996, 220,000. Number seven, Final Fantasy, 1987, and that was 170,000 pounds. Oh. Oh, Super Mario Bros. 3. Oh, no, what? Oh, I fucking love that game. Oh, love that. Love that game. Fucking love that game. And Super Mario Bros. 3, 1991, is selling at £130,000. Now, these will all be in immaculate conditions, still sealed, Quite possibly be with original price tag on the front. Um, maybe 
it had the little um, clip where you can just hang it on a shelf um, or on a rack. Um, but these games won't be won't be opened. Um, they will be sealed. They will be. There's no way you'd be able to open these games. Well, you, you can open them, obviously, but it'd be if you open these games, you've just thrown away uh, hundred and thirty thousand pounds worth of uh, of money. So, it's the third biggest selling Ned's game with more than 17 million copies sold. I was more of a SNES guy myself. Well, I was a Mega Drive guy. My little brother had a a SNES. Um, I did have the Master System, which was the, I guess, was the equivalent to a NES. Um... But my little brother was younger than me, and so when he was able to get games, he got the Super Nintendo, and I got a Mega Drive, which uh, we both loved because we both played it. You know, it oh, that was fucking awesome. Awesome childhood. Awesome bloody childhood. Thank you, Mum, and thank you, Dad. Um, Yeah. Um, Twisted Metal, 1995 for PS1. Good series, uh, good series, actually. Just come out, just dropped. Pretty good, pretty good with Anthony Mackie in it. Absolutely, I love Anthony Mackie. He's not Captain America though, but I do like Anthony Mackie. Um, you make daddy a sandwich. You make daddy a sandwich. <laughs> and, uh, um, Twisted Metal, 1995. And that has just sold for £130,000. Um, 95 vehicle, vehicle, vehicle. Um, oh, how how they vehicular vehicular uh, combat video game was published by Sony on the original uh, PS, uh, but since appeared on the PS2, PSP, and the PS3. Coming across one of these in a box of old games, or perhaps still stuck inside your old console, could be very lucky. Let's say it won't be worth that much. You need it to be sealed. Um, Contra. Ooh, Contra. I didn't play this game. £125,000, though, Contra. Um, For the NES, and that's it. So why did it give me 11 photos? Why did it give me 11 photos? So you got two. Why did it give me 11 photos? That's interesting. Oh, well, that's why it's giving me 11 photos. Oh, dear. Um... I love playing old video games. I fucking love playing old video games, but it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. A uh, bit of a pain in the ass. And I thought I would end on that because um, the episode was very different as I was putting this together. Very different. I popped in the Oscars, Oscars nomination and I popped in the um, that Oppenheimer is a trouble... Um, by that side prick um but this show was slightly different to when i uh, started putting it together i'm gonna make this big screen because look at the money maker the money maker is chef's kiss chef's kiss obviously i'm not that fucking vain you look at me i fucking i've got eight chins uh yeah I'm, look at this guy though look at it where's my finger pointing Look at that guy, Isom, fucking number one. Um, yeah. Um, so, if you stuck around, if you have stuck around this long, I thank you very much. I really do thank you. I don't have an applause applause button on this. Uh, no, I don't. But you get one of these. Get one of them. Thank you for staying this long. Um, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. 
or whatever time you are listening or watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know if I fucked up anything. Let me know. I'd be happy to. Um, I'd be happy to um, to accept that I'm wrong. I'm more than happy to. Um, if you if you did like the video, uh, if you did like um, the video, let me uh, start this again. If you did like this show, and you are listening to on whatever podcast provider you are listening to please smash that follow button. And if you would, would you please leave me a review all the way, one star all the way to five stars. Whatever starage you want to do, leave me, please. That would really help me out. If you got some feedback, let me, I'll tell you that in a second. I fucked up so much tonight with, I can't, I've lost my button as well. Viewer discretion is advised. That's not the button I wanted. Um, I fucked up quite a bit tonight, uh, but like I say, I wanted this show to be fun. Um, as little editing as possible. So I hope it's fun for you guys as well. But if you are watching this on Rumble or YouTube, please, please do me a favour and smash that subscribe button and hit that like button. That would really help me out. Um, if you've got any feedback you want to throw my way, please do. All my descri- uh, all my contact details are in the descriptions. Um, if you if you've got a great intro you want to throw my way, if you if there's something you want me to add, if you want to write me an intro, um, uh, along the um, outside the gates of pop culture, if you want if if you want to write me an intro, please do. I'm happy to, and I'll you know, you you will be forever. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you'll be a legend to me and you'll be a legend on this channel um, you'll be forever remembered on this channel and me um, but if, if there's an intro you want to throw my way please do let me know um, if you want to help out in the show if you if you think if you think there's something I could do better if there's if you want to see if you can help me out please do come get in contact with me like I say all the contact all my contact details are in the descriptions or the show notes. If you just want to throw shit my way, you know, tell me I'm a knobhead, please do. That'd be RP. You might get some sarcastic sarcasm back your way. Um, you know, internet's going to internet basically at the end of the day. There's not a lot I can do about it. Um, but if you are fucking not, not a lot I can do about that, to be honest. I was going to say something else, but I stopped myself. Um, but yeah, so this has been episode five. If you like this show, please smash every like button you know, known to man. If you didn't like the show, grow the fuck up. Um, I've been your host, Rare Eddie One. We are at the pa- at the pates. We are at the gates of pop culture. I've fucked up so much tonight, and I will see you in my next episode. Peace.